Hello there. It's your girl Toyasi. Happy New Year, I guess. Happy New Year times two. For those that have been subscribed to this platform for a very long time, I'm sure you're probably surprised to see this face because it's been a very, very, very long time. I think almost two years and counting. Yes, we have so much to catch up on, which we will in due season in the next couple of episodes that I'll be sharing your way. But today, I just want to come in here to share with you the word that I truly believe the Lord has laid on my heart for the year 2024. And I hope that it blesses you as you begin to just set the tone for your new year. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so new year, new goals. That's something we often hear a lot of people say, right? Or some people say, you know what? I'm over resolutions. It's not a thin, you know, whatever it is. Let me just focus on being the best version of myself. Well, regardless of where you fall on this whole tangent or this whole spectrum, truth of the matter is this. Everybody desires to have, you know, a successful year, irrespective of how you want to approach it, right? Whether it's from a perspective of resolutions or a perspective of goals or a perspective of, you know what, just one day at a time. At the end of the day, we all desire to be the best version of ourselves day by day. Now, the question is this. Do you have a process as to how you're going to achieve that goal? Do you have a plan? Do you actually have um, insight into how God wants you to approach it. This is where the word I'm gonna share with you today comes into play. You know, I was meditating. This was actually close to the end of last year, 2023. I was in my shower, just thinking of a few things and the Lord was, it brought something up into my heart or he laid something on my heart from the book of Genesis uh, from the fall of man. And he instructed me to go and study more on it. Um, and that's where we are today. Today we're gonna to be going into the book of Genesis chapter three. When man fell, and I read, now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God really say, you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but about the tree, about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it or touch it. Or you will die. No, you will not die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food. That's why I want you to pay attention. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at, and it was and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. Hold on to that as well. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. You know, for those of Bible scholars, right? We know that this story didn't end well. Once this happened, this was literally the beginning of the whole <laughs> fall of humanity, right? Um, but if you really focus on honing on the scripture and you wonder how does this apply to anything we're trying to accomplish for the year to you see, what the Lord God was showing me in the scripture was that food, right? Food is essential for the survival of us as the hum as human beings, as the human race. Food is very, very essential for us. Let's just be honest about it. Without food, we can't survive. God wired it that way. And when it comes to what God did in the garden, he had given man food, access to all kinds of foods, especially from different trees and different varieties, except this one. Now, you may wonder, if God didn't give access to them for this one, it means it wasn't good, right? It means it was bad. Wrong. But scripture says right here that Eve saw that this was good for food, and it was a delight to look at. What does that tell us? Something can be good, but doesn't necessarily mean it's good for us. Something can be good, but doesn't necessarily mean it's good or it's God or it has God's signature or God's approval on it. So even as you're setting your goals this year, are you really making sure that those goals are God goals versus good goals? Let's go a step further. We live in a world where everybody wants to be great. Everybody wants to be the next big thing. You know, this is the world of the, of the, of the internet, right? Social media, influences, and so on and so forth. 
And if and while it's a great thing, it can be a great tool to use to, you know, become, to walk in purpose and become the best version of yourself. But if you go about it the wrong way, you can find yourself in a bind. I wrote a few notes right here that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. So bear with me if you see me looking down, right? Not all good food is of God. We all eat food, but not all the food we eat are beneficial to us, right? Even right now in the world we live in, McDonald's is not as beneficial as filet mignon from Perry Steakhouse, for example, for those who are familiar with that, right? There are some meals that we eat it and that taste good on our palate, good, but they are not good for our bodies. So it's the, sa the same thing applies when it comes to our dreams or when it comes to things that we're trying to do. All because it applies or it looks good on paper doesn't necessarily mean that it's necessarily good for us. Be careful of what you are willing to consume to survive. That's the key I want you to take away from this video. Be careful of what you're willing to consume to survive and thrive. Never lose sight of the big picture. So that was the mistake that Eve made in this scenario. In that moment, that food was good for consumption. But she did not take a moment to see how that affected the whole big picture of her entire being. She allowed the enemy to deceive her in that moment in space. While you are on your journey onto greatness and achieving those goals for 2024 or becoming a better version of yourself for 2024 please do not lose sight of the big picture and what is the big picture it's all about god at the end of the day it's all about glorifying god and if anything that looks good but appears to be good for you is going to take you out of that then it is not for you let's go further into the notes in the garden they had access to all kinds of food that were not just good and delightful but also approved by god so at the end of the day these other foods also get the same goal, the same accomplishment, or the same benefits. The only difference was it was a totally different resource. See, we're all trying to get somewhere, which is to be, we're all trying to get somewhere, which is greatness, right? But the truth of the matter is this, not everyone is going about achieving greatness the same way. We all have different methods and different approaches. Some beneficial, some not so much. When you look at both resources or both scenarios in this case in the Bible, one, eating from the trees God, God has commanded that we could eat from, and eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, one literally provided the same, one provided all the resources that man needed to survive with zero consequences. The other one, however, came with consequences, and not just regular consequences, but damn near consequences that is literally still speaking to this day in the life of humanity. I want to just sum this up because I don't want to make this too long. We can always delve more into the you know, this study, because it's so rich, so much that I'm getting from it, even as I continue to read my Bible. But I want to just sum up this video by saying this. Everything God created was defined as good. This included the tree in question here. The only caveat was that it wasn't made to be consumed by man because the extra that came with that had nothing to do with why man was created. The knowledge of good and evil had nothing to do with us. It was not even meant to be in our, in our jurisdiction, much less in our radar. That's why God said, do not go near there. The knowledge of good and evil was never meant to be a concept for us to understand as human beings or even comprehend. We were never wired to deal with the constant conflict between good and evil. And that's why we find ourselves now in a tug of war of going back and forth and trying to figure out when it comes to making decisions on what to do as far as right or wrong because now we are very conscious of what it means to be evil and what it means to be good what a struggle right a struggle so again there are some things that god might tell you don't do in this season there's some things god might instruct you to not even go near or some folks he might tend to not associate with even though they appear to be good but trust that god has a reason for it Maybe you're just not wired to be in that environment. Maybe you're just not wired to be in that job. Maybe you're just not wired or positioned or created or destined to be that thing. Trust God and obey God and do exactly what God tells you to do. And watch your year be a successful one. Again, keep in mind, success is just all about the physical manifestations of what human beings consider to be success in today's generation. To truly live a successful life is to live a life that pleases God and also glorifies heaven. To live a life that, that when people look at you, they can see the peace of God upon you. They can see the joy of God upon you. They can see the favor of God upon you. It goes beyond the money. It goes beyond the bag. It goes beyond all the, 
you know, being popular, being, being well known. All those things are great. And I'm not even saying God won't even give you those things, but I'm saying focus on what is paramount. Don't lose sight of the big picture. And don't go out there seeking what God has not stamped or approved for you because you're not wired to acquire those things unless you be found, found in a snare or find yourself in a snare. Okay, that's pretty much it. First video of 2024. I hope this has really blessed you. If it has, please comment below and let me know one thing that I shared in this video that stuck out to you. I would like to hear from you. And like I always say, I may not have all the answers. I may not know it all, but I am glad another one that does, and that's Christ Jesus, and you can know him too. It's so good to be back on this platform. So many changes to come, so please just stay tuned. But in the meantime, Happy New Year, and go and have a fulfilled, God-centered year in Jesus' name. Blessings.